Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my monthly planner that I have created that is now available on my Etsy shop. I'll talk through what it is, why I created it, and yeah, I'm just really excited about this because I have been working on this for months and months and months and um, created so many different copies, wasn't happy, and I finally have a product that I'm happy with. So I hope that this will be helpful for some of you um, and yeah, let's just get into it. If you've been here for a while, then you'll know that I enjoy spreadsheets. So I have religiously for years used spreadsheets. I sell it on my Etsy store and I get messages to say or emails to say it's really helpful. They really enjoy it. And that is just the best thing ever to hear that I've created something that helps people keep on top of their finances. So this is one of those things that I'm creating as well to help people keep on top of their finances because not everybody likes spreadsheets I understand some people hate them um, and some people prefer to put pen to paper and I actually also like to put pen to paper I like a bit of both so I still have my budget spreadsheet which I love but I also use this now as well um, it's probably overkill but because I enjoy budgeting it's something that yeah, I just enjoy doing. So for the monthly planner, it is an A5 notebook, a spiral notebook. It's just a perfect little size. It's not clunky, which I love, but as I said, there is enough to budget and plan for the whole year ahead. So I'll go through each page so you can see what it contains, but just as an FYI, at the very back of the notebook, it actually explains what each page is for. So if you're ever in doubt and you want a bit of guidance, then there is right at the back of the book a page that explains that. But when you open the book, you will first open to a monthly goals page. I'm somebody who enjoys goals in general. I always do yearly goals, but something that I find even more helpful than yearly goals is monthly goals because it's just bite-sized pieces. Instead of trying to look at the entire year, which sometimes can be overwhelming or intimidating, or you just burn out by month six, if you could just focus on one month at a time and set yourself goals, I think it's a really, really effective way to achieve your goals, even more so than setting yourself yearly goals. So right at the top, you would write whatever month it is. And then I've got three categories that I have included here for the goals. So I'm gonna give some examples of each of these goals just to kind of get get the juices flowing if you want to do this. So a financial goal, that could be to pay down debt. Maybe you want to overpay your mortgage. Maybe you want to focus on your credit score that month. Maybe you want to save a chunk of money towards a holiday that you're wanting to take. Maybe it's putting money towards a house deposit. Maybe you have a giving goal that you want to reach. Or maybe it's just surviving the crazy times and this cost of living crisis. That could be a goal. But I do think it's really important to set yourself financial goals just to try and achieve one little thing to get closer towards the bigger goal. Then we've got health. So health could be things like you're trying to go to the gym more. It could be you're working on your diet and you're cutting out so many sweets and cakes. It could be that you want to go for walks more often or you're going to take the stairs when you are in places instead of taking the lift. It could be finally booking that dentist appointment that you know you need to go to or maybe going to the doctors to address something. Or it could be even your mental health signing up for a therapist, signing up for counselling. This is to encompass many aspects of health. And then the third one is job career. So whatever that is for you, are you looking for a new job? Are you working towards a promotion at work and there's something you can do that would get you closer to that? Is there maybe a difficult discussion you need to have on uh, salary and getting a raise? Maybe you're looking into doing a complete career shift and maybe you need to do some research to figure out what steps you need to take in order to get to that career. Maybe you're in education and there's some goals that you want. And then lastly, I've got a blank space for you so you can put whatever is relevant to you in your life. So then the next page is the monthly budget and the monthly budget review. So I've purposefully designed the notebook so that they are next to each other so that you can write out your budget and when it comes to reviewing, how accurate your actual budget was 
you can just literally compare and contrast. So hopefully that will make it easier. But in the monthly budget, you will put your total income. So that could be your personal income, your household income. Then you've got total expenses, which will be populated as you fill this out. So once you've filled it all in, then you will know your total expenses. And then you have your end balance. So if you are doing a zero based budget method, which means you want all of your income to go to some category, then at the end of the month, you should have a zero budget you should have nothing but if you're not doing a zero based budget then maybe you are in deficit so there's a minus and that means you have to tap into your savings or use credit cards um or it could be a plus and that means you've got some extra spare cash to do things with and then comes the actual budgeting task now something that i have really shifted to this year is the 50 30 20 budget i don't know it's just resonated with me i really like it and it's something that i've now adapted in my spreadsheet and of course in this notebook so 50 30 20 budget is broken up where 50 percent of your income post-tax income so what you actually receive net income goes towards needs 30% goes towards wants and 20% goes towards financial goals. The good thing about this budget is it doesn't neglect the fact that life is for living. It's not just for paying bills and I don't know, squaring away into savings. It's for also enjoying the present moment. So some people will switch this 30 and 20%. So instead of 30% to wants, they put 30% towards financial goals. Um, and instead of 20% to financial goals, it'd be 20% to wants. So you can change that. If you, you can literally cross out the 30% and put 20% to wants and vice versa. So you can change that as you please, but I've stuck to what the recommended guideline is for this budget and I find that it works quite well. So for your needs, 50% of your income should go towards your needs. Needs are things like your mortgage and your rent, your council tax, your utilities, your groceries, your fuel or transport costs to get around and do everything that you need to. It could be childcare. And a really important point is if you have debt, it needs to be your minimum debt repayments because that is a need, that is an essential you can't afford to not pay the minimum repayments. So that should be included in that as well. So anything that you feel that you need to live and survive and be well, that would go into your needs. Then you will see at the bottom of each category, I've put total pounds and total percent. So once you've put all your needs, you would put how much that has come to, and then you would calculate the percent of what that is. The goal here would be to get to 50% or below 50% if you can, but I think it's really helpful to see percentage wise how much of your income is going to each of these categories that's actually one of my favorite parts of budgeting to see how out of work i am or how well i'm doing i just find it a really really helpful tool so 30 percent wants this could be anything you want it to be that is the whole point of a wants category i personally put fun money in this subscriptions money because that is obviously not a need um, things like self-care, most of my sinking funds go in this. Oh, I forgot to mention needs, insurances. I always, always put insurances in needs, but my sinking funds that aren't needs, like for gift giving and stuff like that, would go into wants. I love this category because it makes sure that every single month I'm spending money on things that either bring me joy, that bring me convenience, or that just make life worth living and then 20 percent for goals so these are financial goals this could be things like paying off debt beyond the minimum repayments it could be saving towards a house deposit it could be saving towards an emergency fund it could be investing overpaying your mortgage it could be saving towards a, a home renovation so these are things that are trying to make sure that your future is going to look a bit more brighter financially than it does today and then as i said right across across from it is the monthly budget review and this is to literally compare it so you're meant to budget before your money comes you're meant to know where you want to send your money before it even hits your account and then once it hits your account and you've gone through the month then you would write what, we, what your actual income is so if you're self-employed sometimes this can fluctuate then you'd write what your actual expenses were because of course expenses do often change in comparison to what we thought thought we were going to spend and then you'd write your actual end balance and then you're kind of just repeating the process of how much actually went to needs wants and goals and then you can compare and contrast to what you thought it was and maybe reassess your budget for the following month and then we've got monthly reflections this is for you to reflect on your goals for the month for you to reflect on your budget anything that you think is worth reflecting and i think 
what is really nice about this is sometimes you have thoughts about well this didn't go so well this month and this is why um, and you have these thoughts and sometimes they're quite helpful but if you don't make note of these thoughts that you're having a lot of times in the future you don't remember well at least for me I don't remember those thoughts I'm like I there was a reason why this happened or there was a reason why this didn't happen and I think this is just a nice way to kind of write that down so that you can literally reflect you can reflect on the month but when it comes back to reflecting on the year maybe and looking back you've got notes to figure out why things happened or didn't happen in a certain way and then quite simply after that it's just a couple of notes pages because every good notebook has plain note pages and then it repeats for 11 more months so as i said there are 12 months of this so once you buy this you're good for the entire year so that is the monthly planner i hope for those of you who were looking for something like this this is going to be of good use to you and yeah i hope you've just enjoyed this video anyway in terms of just talking through budgeting and goal setting and, and all the stuff that if you're probably watching this channel gets you excited but yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below let me know if you've got any questions and yeah i guess i'll end it there and thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you in the next video real soon